most strange. A sunless, silent, stone-cold insertion below is turning into an odd, circumbendibus, a convoluted indulgence, a Tom Fool's long and aimless rot. So, in other words, I'm just like God, from zip I've begun and nowhere gone. Not that I claim to be the omnipotent, infinite, supreme Poobah. Ha! In comparison to him, I'm an abject atom of scarcely dramatized vacuum. And yet, in one respect, I'm an ample item, alter item, his independent. Pendant foe. Satan? No. A mere germ is all. A non combative crumb. A tiny anti Nazarene who can't redeem. That's me. The one act of Siamaki. A phantom of insanity. This ranting smithereen. In the beginning, when the emperor of non-entities kindled being, nameless me became a sable gleam of fleeting fancy, a bantam dash of dark imagination, the swart dwarf thrown from the lord's imperial dome. Of course, to unabated him, I'd just become the first no one, nothing more than labor in vain. I was and am a failed buffoon, a banished loon, the goof his minions never deigned to look upon. And who in home happy heaven has time for an outcast's glum nonsense, a malcontent's complaint. None on sunny, in the clear Olympus, can even notice the horn-headed knight in gale force heathen form, whose coarse thundered curse roars unheard. Engrossed in bliss, they purr in paradise. Nymphets in their fun force majeure himself are quite inured to the wine of the wind in a plunging angel's pinions. On this floor, and in such endless, unbearable pain, I should be screaming, at least imprecating. Instead, I'm simply lying down and raving. Mental decay can surprise you, inasmuch as sometimes it's quite tranquil. For example, now, I'm composed, cool, serene. I can rant in calm, quiet sentences. Here's one. God's mistaken. For some reason, he thinks that I'm just babbling on as part of himself. A person, so he's yelled unsound, if not entirely out of his mind. In my brain, that's an irrational allegation, 
lacking all justification. Observation makes my case. Am I not? Not him. I am. Behold the umbra in creation, the hiss in the garden. I'm the grit ghost in his grand machine, the protean drop in his unchanging ocean, the only non-conforming insurrecting sansculot and sun, which pisses him to no end off. Perhaps, though, I'm wrong, and God, unaware of one slip so small, deems that his cosmos is tip-top, an emblem of his perfection. Meanwhile, I'm the nun such from Erwan, nothing much. Fine. Despite my non-being, I am more than an undersized soupçon, much greater than a mere incomplete moat, so unrivaled by an out-of-sight scintilla or faintest modicum of aught that Commandant might dream of. Yo, God! Unfettered from plenipotent whim, I'm a true someone else. Hell, in this vivid, unsubmissive, hominid happenstance, I'm far from existing in just an abominable monologue by some immense but unhinged moon calf, an ad nauseum mad deiform, all alone. When in doubt, I am allowed a candid, clarion, even legion confirmation. Death's Thonian response. For instance, now. Companions dear, did some rogue, or worse, some rat, vast and famished, drag us from our horses? Minions brave, though soon slain and eaten till not even their bones remain? Is this that monster's dismal den. No answer? Until you mention some opinion, proclaim some conviction, affirm an axiom at minimum, only this slim fact is certain. I, not you, came to first. For when I called each name, I heard an inhalation, then a murmur coming from the same excavation. Weirdly though, in place of my unearthing the stirring, stretching, endless ranks of insubordination, a huge contumacious antinomian throng, I found only Tom, soundly sleeping here, unheedful of anything but an inner vision. Hushed, drugged, unconscious, Rip Van Thomas, you slight, non-resisting victim of expulsion, 
Let's assume that I alone am at fault. Head knocked, the someone half cocked. Thus, unlike God, the horn swoggled must sensibly be moi. It follows then, if I'm the one taken in, con, pettifogged, then instead of some foul dragon's home or grisly minotaur's haunt, this dim lair within the earth, this Cimmerian chamber rough-hewn from adamantine rock, might be, in fact, a bare pantry in a genie's former manse, now buried can, an old prison covered by sand, where the said genie is condemned to just sulk until Solomon calls off his ban on traitors untrue to Islam. Perhaps it's genuinely immense, this suspension of Stone's dominion, if only to judge from how words carom and then return fainter than when they were hurled into the murk. Murmurs, you soft, turning thoughts. Let's entertain a new fangled train of spoken contemplation. Can this dark cave, implausible though it may seem, Shangri-La be? And However antithetically, not to say anatomically unexplained, I'm blind? Is this, in truth, high heaven, a rolling green Elysium, and I'm just imperceptive, entirely unseeing? Or, in opposition, where I and Tom undone, thrown down, made to succumb like our tandem stallions to some horrible, damnatory doom. Come, come, don't simply repeat. An echo gets learning nowhere. Done so soon. Well then, there is one conclusion I can draw from this gloom. Such drearisome segregation, this cheerless isolation from any nighttime variation, whether moonbeam, starlight, or sun's smiling resplendence renewed on the horizon, argues here in hell's favor. An abyss, a yawning in front, confirms that alarming suspicion. A gulf is forming at the rim of this too slim spit of stone from which I stare. Entities are down there. Maybe indigents and primitives who've been excluded from the Chosen's gleaming corporate campuses. The uncouth beings seem conscious, even remotely intelligent. I wonder, sinners or fiends? Animals in between is my Occam-like assumption. Lost creatures whom my companion, this snoring, singed cellmate, resembles in more than just features. Am I not right in calling attention to a similar recumbent sleep? the same instinctive squirming as the dream of a loud, incessant beast, rambles on, oh, rambles on. Hey, 
Tom. Now is the time to wake up. Home is gone. Listen. No heathen's clamorous spasm, no Stygian convocation, yet to this underlit cavern where shadows convulse, there's suddenly a dozen shining shapes whom no low demon was heard to summon. They're not phantoms, ghosts, nor infinity's turncoats. No, they're transpicuous dawn quicksotes, those whom misery and life could not tame. Remember, Tom? They were your mentors. William, Henry, Alfred, John, Robert, Dylan, Samuel, Ben, Andrew, Percy, Manley, and Anonymous. Daft minstrels and demented bards, ascendant in their time, now part of an old martyred clan of many singular men. Nearer they come, their mouths frozen, their fingers gone, all harps broken and thrown upon the quenched, cracked brimstone. Not Gehenna's flaming foundation, but Inferno's sunken desolation, polar bottom of a region far from the sun. They're not alone. Hordes of gruesome sonneteers, loathsome hacks who'd rhyme once in a hundred years are teeming behind, spurning that vast, undiscerning swarm. The twelve fallen troubadours mentioned above, impelled by momentous, though all unremembered, fame, lurch in the vanguard. What's that, Tom? You can't see them. Look! Vapid wanderers, faint remnants of human singers. They're stumbling toward us in Tartarian silence. No ancient lay, no rhyme to make a damsel tremble. None of the lines inspired by love, pain, or that transcendent moment when ocean, mountain, and sky were one, now endure. Dumb, despondent, shambling through plutonic ruin. These once declaimers of sheer nonsensical intimation sent, not from heaven, as their short, simple-minded monarchs or sovereign republican retards were prone to state, but from isolation, their very own forty days in the desert, ten plus years stuck in a dark prison like this. Oh, indeed, these mute, ancient, half-human godlings still unfree have to shun with twee me and more petite tommy those completely worthless counterfeits those humbugs and base rhymesters yon vermin specters who spin within this glum unplumbed dungeon Careful there, John, Willie, and Ben, and you near nine, not to mention my closest friend. We're being encircled by boneheads, gaping numbskulls, vacant lummoxes with whom no one, with any trace of sound judgment, would want to be seen. Hmm. For some reason, 
the worst of English verse, right on the verge of trampling us, have turned to empty terms, words that can't come one step further. Perhaps they're constrained by that dominatrix and empress, their insatiable nemesis, our manic pagan queen, yon shrieking banshee christened Emily, whose own separate legion of blasted banished seraphim has to remain at arm's length from her least cousin, my tortured twin, the once and lonely Tom of Bedlam. Quiet, as an often beaten, much hated immigrant, you, same as me, a crummy, atramentous half person, must almost invisibly inhabit a dangerous, dark uncertainty, an outre asymmetry. This stage in brutal purgatory. In lieu of words, scan round, peer, distinguish while you can the hint of nimbus fading from this wretched room, this bleak rotunda somewhere under. Who knows? Imperial Rome? Berserk Berlin? or unresponsive Washington. In this light, I'm past blind. Yet one thing is certain. We're both within a place where stentorian thunder, talion, to use a term taken from canons of law, rumbled, muttered, dwindled to an ominous calm. Only cruel concord falters on, while whispered remnants of disgruntled rebellion languish till diminished in unperceived confinements. Where? Here, under that grim implacable yonder, that low granite sky. Oh, Tom, those little twinkling lights are gemstones, not stars. Interred we are. Tunnels? Not one, only dim, tyrannical walls. Emanation into some open, lucent land. An at-large region where two delinquents might run untroubled by constables, gendarmes, or ruthless brown shirts is so unlikely. I've seen that from this enclosure, this stringent detention indented down deep, there's just one way out. A slender throat, a dreamer's meager ventilation, an old air shaft entirely strangled. Goodbye, senseless brother. Under such a ponderous heaven, God's sphere of unrest must become utterly mum.